And we're live. We're live. We were already live, but now we're live. We're live. Li- live. More live. Liver. Something like anyway, that. Anyway, we're back. It's another it's another beautiful Tuesday. It is. Which means it's movie review day. Movie, yet again. Movie review day. So, so we wanted to preface today's <laughs> yeah. I was like, I think we need review. to introduce this a little bit. By saying we do not apologize in advance for the fact that <laughs> There's a lot of superhero movies coming up in the next few weeks and months. There is. There, it's it's comic book season. It's, we're going to see super, all of them. Yeah, there's no doubt that we will. And we're going to review them. Yes, and you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, every little bit of it. Because I have a microphone and you do not. <laughs> yes, so you will listen to every word I have to say. But all that being said, we are going to do our we're best to to move in other films. Not in that genre, because we know that it's not everyone's favorite genre. It's not everyone's cup of tea. You know, so, um, so this week, we went and, uh, we, we went and saw, arguably, so far in 2019, the feel-good movie of the year. <laughs> I was like, we're a, couple, we're, we're a little bit into 2019, we're, so, yeah. so far. It's technically the feel-good movie of the year so far. Right. Um, we went and saw The Upside with Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart in the leading roles. Yeah, evidently I just found out that this is a remake of the classic French film, The Untouchables, that I had never heard of before. No. So when I say also, classic. And also loosely um, based on real events. Yes. They, they, I think that's the first little bit of credit thing that comes up that says based on true events. Based on true events. Um, it's probably, it wasn't as funny in real life. I hope it was. I, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I really do because I, I. It was a fun, fun little movie to watch, and you know the the high level overview. Yeah, you know the ten thousand foot view. The ten thousand view. Um, you know, a, a rough around the edges ex con comes and <laughs> applies for a job because he has to with what he finds out is a quadriplegic billionaire. Yeah, it's some hilarity guy ensues. We laugh, we cry. Yeah, a guy that it's is a great movie. Richer than Jay Z, I think is richer than Jay Z, but yeah. not as rich as I can't remember. Dang it, the other one. Somebody really Richard. rich, uh, uh, probably Bill Gates or something somewhere like that. in that. Yeah, but richer than Jay Z. Um. So yeah, it's a you know cl- you know a classic tale <laughs> yeah. of a um you know multi billionaire that lives recklessly. And ends well, up getting into a wheelchair, <laughs> a wheelchair, um, yeah, and, and into an accident in which he becomes a quadriplegic. Yeah, and yes, the Kevin Hart he's on is it probation? He's about he's to on get, no, he's on parole. He's, yeah, he he's out of prison. Yeah, again, according to his ex, right? Um, and so he is going and making it look like he's trying to get a job. When you're on parole, yeah, and I'm not speaking from personal experience, just so we're clear, um, but when you're on parole, um, there are certain things that you have to do, and one of them is you have to prove that you're trying to find gainful employment. Right. So, in effort to do that, he's basically just going to places and getting them to sign his, his little checklist so that he doesn't get in trouble. Right. And he stumbles into... A group, you know, kind of a, an interview waiting room with this, which he thinks is for a janitor. He thinks it's for a janitor's position, right? But everybody's in suits and looking really nice, and he's, <laughs> you got to put on your church clothes to, to push a broom around here. I think was the line, yeah. and it was, it was funny. Yeah, I, I like Kevin Hart. I there have been some there have been some reviews that weren't. Kind. Quite so kind. Well, I was film. gonna say as as I used to not be as big of a fan of Kevin Hart as I am on this day. Not because of this movie. It was prior to this movie, uh, but his recent recent movies I actually enjoy. Um, I think he's a funny dude. Yeah, his stand up's decent. He's growing as an actor. Listen, The Rock's first movie was terrible. Oh yeah, but he's gotten better. What are you talking about? The Mummy, Mummy uh-huh. Returns. Get out of here. You don't like some Brandon Fraser mummy returns? I just don't like hot garbage. Cold garbage is fine. Hot Cold garbage, di- on the well, other hand, listen. not my not my particular cup of tea. <laughs> um, no, I think I just 
I mean, in all fairness, I don't think I ever, I don't remember like his first movies or anything, but I don't think I just, it wasn't my cup of tea at first. Didn't I, I maybe I didn't give him a, a fair chance. Um, but it does. It, it, I was just looking this up. It's, yeah. it's got a 39% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't get it. But it has an 88% audience score. That makes and no sense. And we are the reviewers of the people. <laughs> the we are, the we pe- are not. The people's reviewers. We are the people's reviewers. <laughs> so we, we're, I think we're definitely more on the side of the people on this. Certainly, 39%, that's a joke. Yeah. These are people who are picking the movie apart for no reason other than to sound fancy in front of their stupid friends, in my opinion. Right. And I think we were talking about it before... That I will say, if it was not for the casting, that it was. Yes, this movie could have been bad. It absolutely listen. Any buddy film can be bad, right? So you you always go into that with just the smallest amount of trepidation, going, oh. yeah, it's another buddy movie. Yeah, it could be terrible, but it could be Turner and Hooch. <laughs> By the far, greatest buddy that's movie the of bar. All time. It's the is, greatest buddy film of all that's time. That's the bar. Turner and Hooch. What are we the weapon? Sequel? Beverly Hills Cop. That's where the bar for buddy movies set with me. Okay. Never really thought, but I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. I've just never really like. Yeah, in my top five put, movies, do I go my you know my buddy movies? But I would put Turner and Hooch up there. Just hey, because we're semi-professional film reviewers now, so we have semi. to we have to make those sub lists. Yeah, true. So, yeah, I was saying that the the topic of this movie, because it was a very it was a comedy. I'm I'm going to call it more of a comedy than a drama. It was a hundred percent. There was drama. There was some heart. There's always and drama in a comedy. There, there and a, the third act of a comedy is not full of laughs. Yeah, there was a little heart, and I'm not talking about Kevin. <laughs> Come on, I don't, you walked into that one. You went with the pun joke. Man. I did. I always right. do. No, but I mean, it did have heart to it because he Tucker was with the dad joke. He was struggling. This guy's life sucks. He made poor he's, life choices. He's, I mean, a multi-billionaire, but he can only move his neck up. And his mouth. And his mouth, <laughs> as they make that joke. But, you know, that is horrible, which is one of the reasons he kind of fires. He needs a life auxiliary. But not a good one. He doesn't, well, you, you, you get the vibe that Brian Cranston's character um, really... He he knows that he's expected to be you know posh and and all of that, but he doesn't really love it. Yeah, you know that's kind of the vibe that I took away at least. Like he he knows that he's supposed to be, but he's like, oh. right. He doesn't like hanging out with that crowd so much. No, it doesn't they annoy him? And it's since he's had his accident and his wife has passed, his life is not great. Not cool. He's not a big and fan of how things turned so, out. And it's one of those, listen, you can watch it and you can kind of start putting pieces together of whatever, but it's one of those where they kind of need each other because Kevin Hart's character doesn't really know responsibility, doesn't, yeah. doesn't want to take responsibility for things, doesn't want to really work. He's been in and out of prison right. for most of his adult life, yeah. and um, it shows. Right. You know, he's, he's, not a, he's not a go-getter. Right, and then Brian Cranston is kind of given up. And yeah, doesn't, and really... so he he wants somebody who's not exactly a go getter because he's fairly positive that if he gets a good life auxiliary, they're gonna keep he's gonna alive. live longer, right? And you know he's he he's kind of over. He it. doesn't want to die, but he doesn't want to live either. Right, was Ma- kind of the makes, vibe that yeah, I would... m- very quickly makes it known he's indifferent toward life. Yeah, do, do, very quickly makes it known he does not want any life saving measures. Yeah. If something he's, happens, he's got the do not resuscitate order in place. Yeah. But given the, I'm not going to say darker tone, but the, you know, the, I mean, it's a sad tone of this thing that happened to him, this guy's life and yeah. everything. And then you put Kevin Hart in there. And then you there. drop Kevin Hart in the middle of that and it gets funny real quick. And I think kind of going off my thing of if it was different casting or whatever, because there's some jokes in it that are literally laugh out loud moments. Oh, 
the the whole theater when I when I went and saw it, we saw it at different times. Yeah, I will buy. Was I was say dying laughing at some points. My son went with me, who's thirteen. Okay, so I will say I think I walked in with a nursing home van that they'd been on a field trip. We we were oh the my. youngest. Okay. He so he by far was the youngest. I was one of the youngest in the, in the audience. I think there was a pair of grandparents who dragged their grandchild along. Okay. So kind of the same, same thing. I, I dragged I was, my son. And... I was easily, and I'm not exactly a a spring chicken, so to speak. But <laughs> okay. Um. But I was, for the most part, I would say the youngest person by 20 years. Yeah, the we, theater, yeah. Give or take. So, yeah, my son and I saw my son being the, the youngest 55 one. 55 and up crowd was in full effect. Yeah, my son has the sense of humor where he quickly noticed. It was well, like, and it, I, went, I went to a 4 o'clock showing, so basically people went to dinner and then came to the movies before they went to bed. Right. Well, it was kind of like the, the time. Yeah, it was the time that, you know, my wife and I went and watched a Fast and the Furious movie, and we felt like we accidentally joined a car club. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because that was the rest of the people was day eight. Yeah. A car club. I didn't, this, I didn't know that, that your wife lived her life one quarter mile at a time. We do. So, like, listen, we don't talk about the car club. Well, it's rule number one. <laughs> but it was one of those moments where... We're, Speaking of our wives... I know. They're both watching. Hi, Shayla and Yolanda. Hi. Thanks Hello. for watching. Appreciate you. And you. Um, <laughs> um, but it was... My, my son was the first one to know. He's like, we're... He's like, I'm the youngest one here. I'm like, you are. Which I will have to say, I mean, other than the movie is PG-13. And there was there was only scenes where, like, they insinuated like something was, and it didn't. Yeah. So it was very It was pretty friendly. squeaky clean for, even for a PG-13 film. Yeah. So, um. I think with, with in fact, I think with the subtraction of one scene it may have even gotten away with a pg rating yeah and i'd already given a little bit of a heavy overtone to it i mean right there was a catheter there's there's a catheter scene nothing shown or whatever and i listen it it brought up a conversation with my son of how catheters how catheters work (laughs) there you go so that's a it's a conversation every 13 year i know right at some point in his life he's like i appreciate you dad we we had the catheter talk yeah I don't know. Well, but it's important to have the catheter talk with your kids, and here's why. <laughs> There's going to be a day. <laughs> and they need to be successful enough in their life that they're not the ones who have to do it. Yeah. True. Right? True. That's motivation for them. I, I agreed. That's so what I said. It's like, hey, listen. Hey, you don't want to have if to do that thing? And if you're rich enough? Get to work. If you're rich enough, you can hire you somebody. You can hire a life it. auxiliary to do it for you. <laughs> right. It's motivation I mean, for motive, both sets of I, people. Wherever, whichever Either I need to be rich it. enough to pay somebody or they need to be rich enough to not have to do it themselves. Exactly. One or the other. Exactly. So, no, it's good for, you know, um, that whole thing. But there was a lot of, you know, good laugh out loud moments. And I think if it wasn't for, there was a lot of things where it was, you know, a quadriplegic man with food on his face or yeah. needing to be fed food or, you know, bathed. Or something like that, that it made it funny, which sounds horrible because he's quadriplegic, but it because it's Kevin Hart and he's not really understanding how to he's, gently take he's care never of someone. He's never been a caregiver. Right. Or gently in his take, life. Gently take care of somebody that it you know it's funny and weird. But I'm like, Absolutely. if it would have been somebody else or if they would have gone a little bit more this way with it, it would have made it depressing and not really oh, absolutely. funny. Absolutely. Yeah, it wouldn't have been as funny. But I think they did a good job with it. Yeah, there was a lot of, you know, and then he didn't, you know, Kevin Sark character didn't really have, he had sympathy for him, but he was also like, why are you listening to this horrible music? Yeah, he's not a fan of of classical music. Right. Um, You know, but can we address yet again the social justice warriors? Yes. In I relationship think. to this film. Yes. Because I was, I think... I'm um, still yeah. sick of them. Right, right. If you're watching this <laughs> and you were offended by this movie. Yeah. Um, okay, bye. Because we were just discussing a little while ago before that started that it, I, had, I had, was watching some other reviews to kind of see what the overall consensus was. Yeah. Because I'm honestly surprised that it's not the same as ours, which... 
of is I it thought a, it was a fun was movie. A, it was a good time waster. It's, it's yeah. not the movie of the year, but it's fun. Right. It was a pleasant It surprise. was the reason I go to yeah. the movies. It's to escape reality for a couple of hours. Exactly. Enjoy myself. Maybe laugh a little bit. It's, this is exactly what I'm looking for in a... I'll call it a throwaway movie. Yeah, that it's... Listen, it wasn't the one that I'm like, it's not at the top of my list of movies that I'm excited for, but it was one that I was very pleasantly surprised. I laughed a whole lot more than I... like. L- I was laughed. very surprised how much I was not just laughing because I'll, I'll laugh in movies, right. <laughs> but like I nearly choked on my popcorn a couple of times. Oh yeah, there were some really really funny parts where I was I was like can't breathe laughing yeah. for a minute or two. I I was laughing out loud at numerous parts of it and just kind of going, listen, this this movie could have quickly taken a turn, but the social justice where. That it was people taking offense to... Well, I mean, pretty, pretty Literally much... everything. Listen, if you look hard enough into anything, you can find offense well, one of the, to something. One of the things I saw was, like, why didn't they get a real quadriplegic to play the quadriplegic? I don't know... The answer know, to your question is... I don't know if any There's of not actors. a lot of quadriplegic actors, funnily enough. Right. You know, and it's... Can we just take a break from being offended at every well and that's not even and that's not even taking into thing listen actors need to be insured in case something happens to them the insurance on a quadriplegic man on a movie set through the roof and again that notwithstanding again again, i think the pool is super small right we saw earlier what happened this year um or late last year I, i can't remember when it came out um but um clint eastwood directed that movie about the the marines who were on the train uh, right, the right. 1115 to paris or whatever and brought in the real. and he used the real yeah. people and hey props to clint eastwood for doing that but guess what they sucked yeah they, were they weren't not, good actors you want to know why actors. because they're not freaking actors right brian cranston is america's gift to like he's I had a I had a an extension you had a brain to my fart? yeah no 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 I had an extension to my my um, Brian Cranston theory okay and that is that Brian Cranston has actually played the same character in everything he's just done. at different stages different stages of life okay so Malcolm in the Middle fantastic he just lost his mind <laughs> okay disappeared started a new life in New Mexico Breaking Bad yeah. okay then he became who he became. Yeah. But yeah. Philip, whatever. Yeah. Then, he, and obviously that didn't work out long term. Right. Big surprise. I don't think he died at the end of Breaking Bad. I think he's in a wheelchair. I think he took all of his money. I think he invested it, created a new identity. Here he is. Ended up meeting a nice lady and getting injured in a paragliding accident. Right. So... I'm not disagreeing, but I mean, the amount of different roles that he could, like, he's just a great gift to acting. So thank you very much. Nicole and, Kidman was, was in this movie and she was great too. Yeah. Like in the, the role that she played. The last two movies we have seen has a little bit of Nicole Kidman. Nicole in. Kidman. So, good so, year for you. Thank you. Um, well done. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's all these roles and everything like that. And it's, you know, I was very, very impressed by his, Brian Cranston's acting in this film of, it was very quickly in it that I, you know, you kind of fall into that believability of absolutely that that's what's going on, that he's this quadriplegic man and you know, whatever. But we also saw things that it was, I saw one thing that was sexist towards women. I'm not really sure where that came in. I didn't, yeah, I don't pick that up either. I'm, you know, I'm not really sure where they're talking about, but there was the, and we'll do the elephant in the room as far as Twitter comments by Kevin Hart 10 plus years ago. That are we're not you the good. same person you were ten years ago. I am not. Me neither. Yeah. Well, and I think it goes back to that we had this talk. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you were saying as far as like the Office, big fan of the Office yeah. TV show. They're talking about reboots and everything, and Steve Carell had said, "Listen, like that Michael Scott that used to make those comments, like can't he can't exist in in media anymore. He he can't do. And it was one of those light bulb moments where you like he." he can't get on TV and be making those comments anymore. Um, even though, it, as his character was so stupid, Where have we come he didn't understand. When Michael Scott can't make a that's what she said joke. Right. 
It's not a it's not a planet I want to live on. <laughs> I I get you, but there's other things that Michael Scott talked about that nowadays mm. would be kind of whatever. Absolutely. Hi, Angela. So you know, it was it's one of those things of you know talking about things. What this? Yeah, Mike doesn't get talking. Just, get just right, right in there. Just get right in. Because I'm so worked. You're up getting about real this. passionate. You're backing off the I'm mic. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, just you know, people taking offense to everything. Um, Literally everything. Kind of going that Kevin Hart made those comments that they weren't great. No, comments they, they were 10 plus years ago he's owned it but also at the same time he owned it he apologized if he can move on can we move on right so there's people against him being in this movie and there was scenes with him having to put in a catheter and you know it's a, a weird scene that people were taking some people should it. stay away from the movies in fact they should just lock themselves in their house right. and never leave again yeah stop taking offense to everything yeah either either just grow up and learn that not everything is is out there to offend you right. or just never leave the house again right one of the two yeah. like one of the come on two instances yeah it's really um it, it it actually really disappointed me in reading some of the 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 social media comments Right. Regarding this movie where if you've reached a point in your life where you can no longer just have fun when you go to the movies, I feel super bad for you. Well, we go to you know, we go to the movies every week. Okay. We do. Which is way more <laughs> than I've ever gone to the movies it's, it's in my investment. entire life. Whether you know it or not, it time, is. A... <laughs> time and money, it's both. It's an investment. <laughs> um, but my wife actually, you know, she, she made a comment to me the other day. She goes, do you think... Do you think this is going to ruin going to the movies for you? And I was like, no, because I, I love that. I, I, I like going there for an escape. Right. I like enjoying the movies. Are things going to be contrary to my personal belief system? Possibly. My personal code of ethics and honor? Yeah. Guess what? It's fake. Yeah. It is, and you said it before, is... An opportunity to just shut your brain off for a couple hours. And enjoy yourself. Eat some popcorn. Just relax. Watch a yeah. movie. Be entertained. It's and this movie you know, does there's, that. there's about, you know, during the day during the daytime, during the week, there's about including our movie time and then, you know, the time where, where I, I, I go to church with my family, there's about five, six hours a week where like during the day. I take an opportunity to turn my phone off, turn my, you know, and just, and, and kind of block out everything outside. Oh, of course. I will never stop enjoying that. Yeah. I think we've joked around when we, when we we first started this, our, our jobs are, keep us very busy. Oh yeah. And I thoroughly enjoy the opportunity to just sit down and be entertained or be, you know, have something just more positive for a minute where it's not the constant rat race. Right. Well, it was like you say, when we first started this little escapade of reviewing movies, we decided it would be a good idea to only watch bad movies. I'm and so glad the... we changed our mind on that. And it was quickly where it was like, I don't, I don't that, really that want... That might have ruined going to the movies. If we would have kept down that path... Yeah. We would. I think I would have quit. Yeah, I would have been like a couple of months. This ago. has been fun. Like, I but don't, let's move on and do something right better with. That's going to be because I can no longer watch movies. Yeah, because they're all bad now, in my mind. They're all you know. But we've quickly kind of gone. Listen, there's only so many bad movies out there as well. Yeah, that and that, actually, what what spawned us <laughs> to stop only reviewing bad movies is when there was two weeks in a row where we were trying to find bad movies and we couldn't. So we're like, well, let's review something we actually want to see. Right. And well, you know, we have more fun doing that. Or so. there's been, you know, in this little thing, there's been movies that I thought were not going to be great, but turned out to be really good and turned out to be really good. I'm going to say this is one of those ones where I was like, you know what? I thought there was going to be I some was laughs in it. Politely indifferent to the idea of it at the onset by the time it was over, I was glad we watched it. Yeah. I was like, but you know what? I thought it was going to be okay, and I was going to leave it and be like, hey, eh. you know what? It's an, it's a, you know, stream it, whatever. But I was, I would go watch it again. Yeah. 
I'd go see it. You know, I'd listen. It's and I would laugh just as hard. Maybe no, I would make a point. <laughs> so I, I think I think I'm in the go see it camp. I'm I'm gonna side with the people on this one. Yes, the 88 percent of of Rotten Tomatoes users who think that this is a movie that was worth seeing, because um, that's definitely where I'm at with it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go see it and. I even asked my son afterwards. I was like, "All right, so what's your vote?" And he said, "Oh yeah, go see it." Yeah, it so was I'm fun. Coming... It was funny. It was a good time. You'll laugh. You'll cry. Again, yeah. so far in 2019, it's a feel good movie of the year. Yeah, definitely. You and you, you do feel good after the movie. You're like, yeah. you know what? I needed yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. Well, one of those things you're just kind of like, you. you know what? It's kind of like, oh, whatever. One of those days, go watch this movie. Yeah. Brings that much extra little bit of joy. Yep. Their friendship. Their friendship. They remain friends for years. Years to come. So that's the spoiler alert, I guess. Well, it's like they hate each other. At the yeah. End of the <laughs> by, the, by the end of the movie, they actually get in a fist fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, Take yeah. a while. Process yeah. it. No, I get it. I'm okay. just. I'm trying to choose my words <laughs> carefully here. <laughs> So um yeah, but that no, that's it for us for this week. Um next week is Glass. Glass. Yes. We can, we've we've already I'll decided. Put a little extra bass in my voice Thank for you. that one too. I can just I can only yeah. It's the ASMR portion no, of the video. So I'm I'm excited for that Glass. one. Glass. So I've got to get caught up on some things. Yeah, you need to watch stuff. a couple of movies before you can watch the movie for next week. Yeah. Um but the continuation and probably the final chapter in the that Unbreakable Saga, saga um, from M. Night Shyamalan. So yeah. I'm so super excited about it. Um, YouTube page that yes. gets kicked up. Lastly, but not leastly. Well said. Um, you, you'll be able to catch our content on YouTube um, going forward. So we're, we're going to... Everything's still staying here on Facebook. Yeah. So That's not changing. That's not changing one little bit. But... Um, Listen, the fact of the matter is that Facebook only lets about 10% of our viewer or of our subscribers actually see our content. Not cool, man. So we're moving. We're, we're also going to be uploading everything to our YouTube channel, which was just launched today. There's a couple of videos up there. So we would really love it if you Please. would go over there and subscribe and then make sure you hit the bell for notifications. That ensures that if you want to see our stuff, you see it every single time. Exactly. So, so and then you can stick here for our buddy our, our our, our short buddy films that we do every week um you can tune in for those so again they'll all always be on facebook but we're also putting those up on youtube so that more people can enjoy them please yeah spread the word the bird watch the watch bird is enjoy the, the bird is the word the bird is the word <laughs> anyway on that's that it note. for us thank you again for watching Thank you. And um, until next time, he's Tucker. He's Beard. We're out.